Hi, my name is Ish McGann. I'm here talking to Khan Acoustic um, about books, ideas, and all sorts of stuff, including and especially Connor's uh, new book, Edda, which is the third in the Avatar Chronicles. Um, we will have some additional commentary from uh, Connor's daughter, Maya, who made the little kind of head you'll see bobbing around the bottom of the screen there. Um, so, I suppose just to start off, finishing a series. Um, Conventional wisdom, with, with all the end, extra bits, all the loose ends you have to tie up, conventional wisdom would state that you need to kind of keep things as simple wherever possible. Um, so you, you, you created six worlds. <laughs> um, what possessed you? <laughs> yeah. Uh, seven, actually, if you include a possible second epic, which was the, the, the original virtual world in the first book. Yeah. So what drove you to create six worlds to, uh, to kind of populate in the third book? Um, to be fair, they're not all explored as in depth of, of as epic and saga are. We kind of race through them um, in an Odyssey-like series of magic encounters and, and battles to get to the to the final uh, battle. So I didn't really make the task too hard for myself and sort of suddenly take it uh, on too much. And the other thing is that all six, seven worlds. It's, they're all part of the, the one same kind of universe because mm. the, the, the basic thing about epic saga and edit is that they are virtual worlds where human beings once created these enormous games like say World of Warcraft or EverQuest or um, it, it, Second World War games in the case of uh, one of these worlds so human beings have been created these vast environments to play in but in every case they've, they've gone slightly wrong, slightly dark mm. Um, yeah, because that is the, the, the path of the story very much is the path through all the worlds. You don't explore them all. They're kind of, um, it's like one line going through these, all these yeah. different environments. Um, so when you originally set up Epic, um, it's very much a, a magic base or a magic um, background, uh, this kind of world. It's, it's very much a mythical world. Um, and it was uh, in stark contrast to the real world that Eric, the, the main character in the first book, the, the world he lived in. So, uh, Ursula Gwynn is somebody you always kind of state as one of your, your big influences. How, what influence did she have on Epic? Because it's, it's quite a different world from the world she would have created, even though it's oh, a yeah. magical one. Yeah, um, I think that's a good question actually, because, and I sent her, as soon as Epic was published, I sent her the book. And then I thought, I wonder what she'll make of it. She probably won't like it, but um, it has one very strong uh, um, connection to her work which is in the, the, the morality of the characters mm. and the sort of philosophy of the book whereas the actual technical, you know, the fantasy fight owes a lot stuff. more to Tolkien mm. uh, but that's because those kind of games, fantasy games, they're all ultimately derived from Tolkien, Lord of the Rings so, so there's the game itself, which it doesn't owe a lot to Ursula Le Guin but then there's the, um, the character of Epic, who's a bit like, in his morals uh, the um, the wizard of earth theme. Right. Um, yeah, because the in in epic the the characters can get magic. Sometimes they can get magic quite easily. They don't have to yeah. develop the discipline. Yeah. Um, but part of that comes from the fact that this is a virtual world, and that they live a very hard life on the outside of it. Um, so uh, one of the other things that really kind of struck me about all the books, but particularly about Edda, because there are so many different types, is, is the whole issue of identity and. Um, I mean, you have Eric, who is also Cinderella. He's, so he's he's a male character who plays the female character. You've got Ghost, who's also a slightly, well, I suppose an electronically supernatural character. Um, you have Jodicus. You have um, Penelope, mm. aka Princess. So you have lots of different people who are playing more than one. Yeah. There's more more than one facet to them. Um, was that something you did consciously? Did you set out to say, I'm going to do a character who has these two? these different sides to them, or was it something that just kind of happened to the story? Uh, a bit of both. With, with Penelope it was very conscious, and Penelope's the, the main story of Edda is the story of a 15-year-old girl who has been brought up one way to believe very, very strong world view that she's discovering is false. And, I, I mean, I, you must have had this feeling yourself of the things that you were brought up to believe in, whether it be religion or political mm. values. You start questioning. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and it's a very disturbing... I, but liberating time in one's life when you're doing that. So I very definitely am exploring that with Penelope in particular. 
And then with the others, it's a little less conscious. Um, Eric, at one point, is asked in the, in Epic, "Why did you create a, a woman to play?" And for him, it was all about sort of defying the conventions and norms. He was really fed up with the way their world was going. Mm -hmm. So he put all the points into beauty. He created a woman, and uh, lo and behold, it actually turned out to be quite a good strategy. But that was less, yeah, that's less kind of conscious. I'm not trying to, um, I'm not trying to get people to think in what it'd be like to have a different gender. Although, if you look carefully at, at, at uh, my books, when Eric is playing Cinderella and she's doing stuff, it's she jumps, mm -hmm. she drew her sword. Yeah, because that's something hard to keep track of. It's at times yeah. it's a he, sometimes it's a her. Yeah, and when he's thinking it's him, yeah. and when he's doing it's her. And uh, I, I kind of was deliberately playing with that idea that you might be identifying with a male who was using she about his own actions. Yeah, um, and do you think that's something that's because obviously strong female characters are almost a, they're an absolute must now in, in most fantasy yeah. sci-fi stories and, and quite often taking the lead now. Um, and you have the likes of well, back in the nineties and the early two thousand, would have been Lara Croft. Yeah. So you've had a lot of boys playing a girl, which yeah. before that really would have been unthinkable. Yeah, would have. Yeah. For most kids, they would go, oh, "I'm not going to play a girl." Yeah. Um, yeah. So now you have this, and I always felt that even even given the high tech nature of it, that Eric is quite there's a detached feeling sometimes from Cinderella. You can see the two sides where he's not completely immersed in it. You know, you get the impression he can still feel somebody tapping yeah. on the leg in the real world. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, um, it, but it wasn't something you did. You kind of say, I'm going to try this type of identity. I'm going to try this one. Not really. I mean, I'm aware that I, I want my books to be read uh, by girls or boys. So uh, I was conscious that I wanted strong women characters and strong men characters. And with um, Epic and Cinderella, I, I cheat, but I kind of solved it mm -hmm. in one. Um, and was the one character that you found particularly identified with? In all my books? Yeah, well, in any of them, but particularly in Edda. Was there, I mean, in Edda you had yeah. Donald, the whole group. Was the one you felt really was your mouthpiece, or was the one that you, you thought, this is the one that kind of most represents my character? I suppose Eric, Eric still, he's a decent lad. But Penelope as well, I mean, she's troubled. Day, she's very dangerous as a result mm, of yeah. growing up. She grows up with a, um, a sentient, sentient computer game who's uh, survived the battle of a kind of um, Age of Empire type of game. And as a result, he is really harsh, focused mm. on conquest. And well, so he's psychopathic, not in the terms yeah. that he's, he's violent all the yeah. way, but the fact that he has no empathy. So. Yeah, yeah. And so she's, that's all she's had as a kind of father figure. And it's, it's definitely scarred her. But uh, you know, I kind of like Penelope because of her flaws in a way. Mm -hmm. um. Um, so just kind of the last bit I suppose, the, looking at Penelope, do you think there's, there's a representation there of the way things are going in society? Do you think that we're kind of, we're getting away or we're, we're almost kind of neglecting our real lives in favour of virtual ones in some cases? Yeah. Um, the Sims and you have um, Second Life and all these. So do you think there's a danger we're going to go down this route where we're looking for a more glamorous, exciting world in the, the virtual world, and we're going to end up neglecting real uh, life. Actually, you know what's happened in Ireland has has made me feel there's resonances with that. The um, for a while we lived in a dream of a booming economy of, of uh, you know fantastic economic success apparently, but it was all false, and now we're wo we're waking up. So, funny enough, I don't think it's so much that people are doing too much online stuff. It's, it's even in their daily lives, well, there's a certain falsity about it. I mean, I love, and um, you probably do too, that moment in The Matrix where, just at the very beginning of The Matrix, where he says, look, I said something's wrong. Mm. And it's, I, I am trying to play with that sense that... That unsettling feeling. Yeah, that there's, there's got to be more than, 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 than this, mm. uh, than what we're told is... A fulfilling life, and uh, and yeah, it doesn't feel right. So there's a very strong. You should you should pick up that vibe from mm -hmm. uh, Edda, and it's not a critique of say people because it would be hypocritical of me to say people should play less computer games. Because I mean, come on, <laughs> I play a lot of computer games. Um, okay, we better we're we cut it short, or we're going to run out of time. So um, Colin, thanks very much. Thanks, and, um, and we'll talk again soon. Okay, cheers. See you.